Hey, what's up guys? Hope you are all doing well. Today's topic is speech recognition in the browser and more specifically we'll implement a voice search with JavaScript using the Web Speech API. And let me quickly demonstrate the end result by clicking on the microphone button speech recognition begins. Top programming languages 2019. Go. And here we get the Google search results. I hope you guys will enjoy this video and get some value out of it. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe. And without further ado, let's go. Okay, this is our starting point. In the project folder, I've created three files, the index.html, style.css and main.js files. In the index.html file, I typed some basic HTML5 well-played code, inserted the title, voice search with JavaScript, and linked the external files to the document, the fondosom icons, and the style.css and main.js files, which are currently empty. Notice that instead of placing the script element in the body right above the closing body tag, I placed it in the head using the defer attribute. And we can now proceed to defining the body content. All we'll need is a form which will be contained within a container element. I can do this due to the Emmet plugin. And let's add the form element. We'll come back to the action attribute in a moment, but let's first add the search input, which will be the only input of this form. The action attribute specifies where to submit the form. So, for example, let's perform a Google search for the term cats. Here are the results and this is the action URL followed by a question mark and the input parameters. This is the search input and a few other parameters separated by ampersand. In other words, this tells Google to run the search program or script for these parameters. OK, let's paste the action URL. And what remains is to specify the name attribute for the search input field. Notice that Google decided to use the letter Q for the search input. And by the way, we can ignore these parameters for now. Q stands for query and I actually think that query would also work. Indeed it works but any other word here wouldn't work. For example, let's say unicorn. Indeed it doesn't work and Google redirects us to its home page. So let's set name to Q. And we should now have a functioning Google search form. But before testing, let's add an ID to the form, a placeholder to the input field, and let's disable autocomplete. And let's also add autofocus. Great, now let's open the project in the browser. For this purpose, I'm using the live server Visual Studio Code extension. This is what we've created up to this point and let's search for JavaScript. And we get the Google search results for JavaScript. Okay, now if we wanted the response to be displayed in a new window or tab, we could add the target attribute over the form element and set it to blank. So now if we search for JavaScript, we can see the search results in a new tab. Nice. However, this is not necessary in our project. And finally, let's add the microphone button, which will be used in order to enable or disable speech recognition. Notice that we should specify the type of the button and set it to button. 
otherwise by default it will be assumed to be a submit button which submits the form and in here goes the microphone font awesome icon a while ago I've created a video explaining in detail how to incorporate font awesome icons into your projects feel free to check it out I will include a link in the description notice that later we will use JavaScript in order to only add this button to the DOM if browser supports speech recognition otherwise there is no need for it to be here nice now we could move straight into JavaScript however I would prefer to add some styling first since this is completely irrelevant to the main objective of this video I will just paste the styling into our CSS file I will of course include a link in the description to this project in case you want to have a closer look and this is the result the input and the microphone button just a matter of preference ok let's move on to JavaScript for starters, let's store the DOM elements we'll need to access into variables. So this is the search form element and this is the input of search form it is this element over here notice that here we are using the query selector over the search form element in order to get its first descendant which matches this selector it is of course the same as using this selector over the entire document And let's also get the microphone button as well as the icon. Okay, and finally, the time has come to use the Web Speech API in order to add speech recognition in our project. Notice that this is an experimental technology and therefore we should think carefully before using it in production projects. The Web Speech API has two parts speech synthesis, which is text to speech, and speech recognition. This is the one we are going to use in our project. And let's check browser compatibility for speech recognition. We can see that currently, July 2019, that is. It is only supported by Chrome and Chrome for Android and currently it is implemented with the vendor prefix WebKit and you will need to serve your code through a web server for recognition to work so it will not work offline because audio is sent to a web server for recognition processing support for speech synthesis is better and let's start using the web speech API for starters let's access the speech recognition interface which lives on the browser's window object so this expression will be evaluated to the first part if browser supports speech recognition without a prefix this is probably for future implementations otherwise it would be evaluated to this part if browser supports speech recognition with a prefix in both cases we get a truthy result otherwise expression will be evaluated to undefined which is falsy very nice now we can check whether speech recognition is available and in this case for starters let's just log your browser supports speech recognition otherwise let's log your browser does not support speech recognition so let's save 
And if we open the console F12 to open the dev tools, your browser supports speech recognition. Okay, so as expected, Chrome supports speech recognition. However, if we used Firefox to open the project, we can see that your browser does not support speech recognition. So in this case, the microphone button does not have any purpose of existence. So let's only add it to the DOM if speech recognition is available. For this purpose, let's initially remove the microphone button from the DOM and add it in here using the insert adjacent HTML method over the search form and I'm using single quotes here since I'm using double quotes in here so before end means that we are placing the button element inside the search form after its last child and now we should move these two lines in here let's save and test microphone button is still there in Chrome but not in Firefox okay let's proceed and at this point let's create a new speech recognition object so now this is the object that will manage our whole recognition process it has all the properties, methods, and event handlers we'll need for speech recognition. Now, when we click on the microphone button, we want speech recognition to start, and we also want to change the icon to a microphone with a slash, indicating that if we click again, microphone will be muted and speech recognition will stop. So let's add an event listener for the click event over the microphone button. So whenever there is a click event over the microphone button, we want this function to be executed. Microphone button click and let's implement this function. We first need to know the current state of the button in order to act accordingly. And since we'll be toggling between two different icons, one way to do this would be by checking the current font awesome icon class. So if microphone icon currently has this class, well, in this case, we want to start speech recognition. Otherwise, we want to stop speech recognition. Okay, and let's first simply change the icon by removing and adding the corresponding font awesome icon classes. Nice, and let's quickly check the result. Okay, and what remains now is to actually start or stop speech recognition when clicking the microphone button. And in order to start speech recognition, we should use the start method over the speech recognition object. And by the way, let's take a quick look over the available speech recognition methods. Here they are, abort, start, and stop. I will also include a link in the description to this documentation page for speech recognition. And similarly, in this case, we want to stop speech recognition. So recognition.stop. 
Now, if we wanted to do something when speech recognition starts or stops, we could add event listeners for the start and stop events over the speech recognition object. So, let's add an event listener for the start event and whenever the start event occurs, we want to call the start speech recognition function and let's implement this function right now and by the way again before proceeding let's take a quick look at speech recognition events here we are so we can listen to these events using add event listener or by assigning an event listener to the on event name property so instead of adding an event listener this way we could alternatively do it this way recognition dot on start equals function and include the event function code in here okay and this is the list of available events I think in our project we will only use the start the end and the result event. Result event is fired when the speech recognition service returns a result. Okay, let's proceed. So, whenever the start event fires, let's log in the console speech recognition active and similarly, let's add an event listener for the end event. And in this case, we want to log in the console speech recognition disconnected. And you know what? Let's also move the microphone icon change inside the event handlers since this will always trigger the start event and this will always trigger the end event. Okay, let's check the result. So now if I click on the microphone button and let's also open the console, notice that the first time we have to allow the page to have access to the microphone. So speech recognition is active and if we click again, speech recognition disconnected. Active and also notice the red circle while recording. Disconnected. Okay, now in order to be able to access the result of speech recognition, we should first handle the result event. So let's add the corresponding event listener. So, as soon as the speech recognition service returns a result, the result event is triggered and now the event holds the results and let's quickly explore the event by logging it in the console. So, now I will start recording and say something. JavaScript Frameworks and here we get the event object many things in here but what we are mainly interested in is the results field which is actually a two-dimensional array and in here lies the actual result we were looking for the transcript and we also get the confidence level so we are almost 99 percent certain that this is what i said Okay, a couple of notes before proceeding. Notice the is final flag or property over the speech recognition result, which is set to true, and this will always be the case since the default value of interim results property over the speech recognition object is false. If we also wanted to get the interim results while speaking, we could set this property to true. And in this case, we would also get a bunch of results with the isFinal property set to false, 
before getting the final result. However, in this project we'll only need the final result, so we'll keep the value of interim results property to false, which is its default value. Now, regarding the second dimension of the two-dimensional results array, it has to do with alternative results. And in our case we only have one result, since the default value of the max alternatives property over the speech recognition object is 1. If for example this was 5, then we would get up to 5 alternative results. However, we will stick to the default value, since anyway, usually the first value is the most accurate. So, index of second dimension will always be 0. And finally, regarding the first dimension, if you recall as soon as I stopped speaking and the final result was available, speech recognition was automatically disconnected. And this is due to the fact that the continuous property over the speech recognition object is by default set to false. If we wanted speech recognition to continue even if user pauses while speaking, we should set continuous property to true and in this case new results would be added and result index would also increase in order to indicate the index of the current result. But enough with talking, let's show this with an example. And let's set the continuous property to true. And let's start recording. First result, second result, third result. Okay, as you can see, speech recognition was not interrupted. Result index increases in order to indicate the current result. And for example, let's explore the third event object. Here are the results. We have three final results. First result, second result, and sad result. So it almost got it, but not exactly. It got two out of three correctly. Okay, let's continue. For starters, let's comment this out in order to only have one final result. And let's access the transcript and store it into the corresponding variable. Event dot results zero zero dot transcript. And now let's display the transcript in the search form input. So search form input dot value equals to transcript. OK, let's check the result. JavaScript frameworks. OK, notice that speech recognition automatically disconnects since continuous property is currently set to false. And you know what? I would also prefer the input to remain active in case we wanted to add something or maybe do some corrections. So when speech recognition ends, let's make sure that search form input is focused. And why not? Let's do the same when speech recognition starts. OK, let's check the result. JavaScript frameworks. Indeed, input remains active, but I changed my mind, so let's record again. Books about JavaScript. Here we are, and let's submit the form by hitting the enter or return key. OK, and notice that Google, of course, also provides the possibility to search by voice. Let's do it. Top movies of all time. Nice. And if you noticed while I was speaking, it also presented the interim results, not just the final result. OK, back to our project. Now, instead of hitting enter to submit the form, let's do it automatically as soon as the result is available. So as soon as we have the result, let's submit the search form. 
but instead of doing it exactly instantly let's add a small delay of let's say 750 milliseconds and let's check the result great inventors Indeed, form is submitted automatically and we get the search results. Okay. Now we could also define the language of speech recognition by setting the lang property over the speech recognition object. If not specified, this defaults to the HTML lang attribute value or the user agent's language setting if that isn't set either. So, in our case, it defaults to English. However, let's try some other language to see how it performs. And let's try Greek, my native language. And again, I will search for great inventors, but this time in Greek. Spudei Febretes. And we get the results for great inventors. Very nice. Okay, back to English. And finally, let's enable continuous speech recognition in order to keep listening for commands, such as to stop recording or reset input or to submit the form. And recall that with continuous recognition, this index will not always be zero. So let's replace this with the current result index. And what remains now is some basic if else logic in order to achieve the functionality we want according to the commands. And let's comment this out since we don't want auto submission of the form. So, for starters, if at any point we get the command stop recording, we want speech recognition to stop. So, if transcript dot to lowercase, just to be sure, dot trim equals to stop recording, in this case, we want speech recognition to stop. Else, if search form input value is currently empty, so if not search form input value, in this case we want to set its value to transcript. Else, in this case command was not stop recording and input value is not currently empty. And if we get the command go we want search form to be submitted and by the way at first i tried using the word search instead of go in order to submit the search form but speech recognition only got it right about 30 to 40 percent of the time and that's why i decided to use the less ambiguous word go okay we are almost there just two more cases to consider. So if we get the command reset input, in this case, we want to set input value to an empty string. Else, we want to replace the input value with the current transcript. And I think we are actually done. Let's check the result and let's first test the stop recording command. Stop recording. Indeed, it stopped recording and we can also see in the console that speech recognition was disconnected. So let's continue. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Go! Very nice. Guns and Roses. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Reset Input. 
stop recording very nice and now let's also make sure that we can search for the term go so the first time we say go we want it to become the input and the second time we want it to act as the command to submit the form go go excellent okay guys let's wrap it up as you can see speech recognition opens up new possibilities regarding user interaction with websites or applications. It is not easy to make future predictions on speech recognition adoption. However, the underlying technology has already come a long way and keeps improving. I really hope you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. If you did, please hit the like button and share the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want more. For any questions, suggestions or just say hi, please use the comment section below. Till next time, keep coding, keep improving and enjoy the journey. Take care. Bye.